your phone, ask the question, and return your phone to mute. Dr. Bendapudi will be our first speaker, followed by Vince Tyre. Tyre will take the first set of questions. Thank you, Dr. Bendapudi. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us on such short notice. Before we address the NCAA case, I'd just like to express a couple of sentiments on behalf of everybody at UFL. First of all, we hope that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy, and that all the people of the Commonwealth and the country and the world are able to heal as we deal with this horrific global pandemic. I'd also like to say on behalf of all of us how deeply grateful we are to the healthcare providers whether they're at our UFL health system or elsewhere, for the caring and compassionate and expert clinical care they're providing, to the researchers who are working tirelessly to find vaccines and therapeutics, and of course, to the so many, many unsung heroes who are on the front line, whether they are working in retail or whether they are in our physical plans or IT or HR, these are the people who are enabling that clinical care and research. Each and every one of you, you are our heroes and we appreciate you a great deal. As I think about the past several weeks, uh, we are no different from other institutions. We have been dealing every day with the challenges of the crisis, but I'm so proud of the way that the UFL team has pulled together uh, to make sure that the mission of the university continues. We are bringing our spring semester to a close and we are busy preparing for the summer and for the fall. And I'm so proud of the entire team in athletics. Our vice president and athletic director, Vince Tyre, and the whole team are making sure that we are strong and steady for the fall semester and whatever may come. And like you, I am so hopeful that we have a regular fall and that we'll all be cheering for our Cardinal football team. Now, as you know, the NCAA enforcement staff has been working for more than two years on an investigation into our 2016-17 men's basketball program and some into the 2017-18 program. The investigation of UFL is one of dozens launched by the NCAA into basketball programs around the country. As you know, the Department of Justice announced a sweeping investigation in September 2017. Now, while neither Vince nor I were in our roles during the period of these allegations, I just want to tell you that we are fully committed to make sure that the University of Louisville synonymous with the highest levels of ethical conduct. So we do take these allegations seriously. You may have seen in our letter to the community earlier today that uh, we promise to very carefully review the notice of allegations and determine our response. We'll accept responsibility for violations that we are in agreement with if they're based on undisputed facts. But we will not hesitate, repeat, we will not hesitate to push back against those allegations that we simply don't believe are supported by facts or by NCAA law or by precedent. Vince will give you in a few minutes much more detail about the allegations issued today, the next steps in our process. But I want to tell you how proud I am of what the University of Louisville has done in this past uh, couple of years. And I'm proud of our entire UFL community. You may remember that I took over as president on May 15 of 2018. And since then, I have been so uh, gladdened and so proud about how deeply every one of you cares about UFL. So I know that it is that love and affection for UFL that makes these allegations disappointing. But I want you also to know that what we have done at UFL together as a Cardinal family, to be a model of compliance, to be a model of ethical conduct, we truly believe, I truly believe, that we have gone above and beyond any other institution. 
And let me tell you why I believe this. Among more than a dozen reforms that we have made, here are a few. We changed the reporting structure so that now the AD reports to me and we made sure that compliance for athletics reports directly to my vice president of compliance, risk and audit. The council for the athletics department reports directly to my general counsel. Now I also want you to remember the incredible personnel changes that have happened at this university. We have a new president. We have a new AD. We have a new head coach. We have all new assistant coaches. We have truly invested. Vince has been tireless about this in our compliance education and our monitoring efforts. We've created an ethical leadership curriculum for every single person in our athletics program. We've changed the contract language for our coaches so that we hold them responsible for their ethical conduct. I think in April, when I was first announced as president, some of you asked me, how do I define culture? And I told you then that culture is what we tolerate. So I think you will see from the changes that we have made as an institution, that we are sending a very strong message about our commitment to ethical conduct and what we will and will not tolerate. We sincerely hope that these reforms, once again, that I believe have gone well beyond any other institution will help us in our NCAA case. But we also hope that it provides guidance to other institutions as they also embark on a path of rectifying what may have happened. So today is a difficult day for those of us who love our university and our men's basketball program. But I want you to know that I take heart and I hope you do too that we know better days lie ahead. I hope you're proud of your institution that has made all the difficult decisions. We've taken the necessary steps and our mission and our academics have not been deterred in any way. And that even during the most challenging of times, we have leaned on our values, the cardinal principles to guide our actions. Before I turn this over to Vince, let me just share two additional points. First of all, as it relates to this case, I know you will have lots of questions, but please look up the NCAA bylaws. We are extremely limited by those bylaws about commenting on specific allegations at this point or about the details of the investigation. I just wanted to remind you in advance that we will be unable to answer these as the enforcement process continues. The second thing I wanted to tell you is how proud I am and how grateful I am to have Vince serve as my vice president and our athletic director. He stepped in during a really difficult time and has led our university athletics with integrity and competence and dedication. He has never wavered at a time when many would have. I, I know that he has served so well because of his love for the university. I also know that countless leaders of athletics across the country have reached out to him to ask how we are doing things and what we have done. I also know that he completely understands that athletics is a big part of the university, but it's a part of the university. And so I'm equally proud of the fact that under his leadership, the GPAs of our athletes are higher than they've been, that the service they provide in the community is higher than it has ever been, that we know that these are incredible young people who are ambassadors for UFL. So I guess I'll tell you that I give Vince a lot of duties, well beyond athletics. He has been, uh, ready to serve other duties as assigned, I guess, uh, in terms of advising many other aspects of the university, which is what I expect of every single member of my team. My deepest thanks to each and every one of you for your unwavering interest in and support of the University of Louisville. You know what? This is when we know 
who our true fans are and our family is. We need you. We need you now more than ever. And I again believe that we as a university have gone well beyond any other institution in setting the model for compliance and the highest ethics that is in the uh, academy. So with that, let me turn it over to Vince Tyre. Thank you, President Benaputi. Um, you know, much like Neely just went through and talked about, you know, we, we do need our fans. We need our support. Uh, when I took this opportunity on October 3rd of 2017, I, I really requested our fans dig in. I used those words to dig in and support us. This isn't the time to walk away. It's a time to really support us. And that has brought about some, some great results, you know, and, and before the pandemic hit and where we are today, it was, uh, we were on pace for some records in many ways here at the university and the, and the athletic department. But let me uh, reciprocate your kind words by lauding your leadership during these unprecedented times. We're fortunate to have you leading with your strength, resiliency, compassion, and decisiveness. It was needed and you've certainly filled that void. Uh, you know, I, it's clear we're going to get through this with your guidance and leadership. Let me also express my appreciation for all that you do to support our, our Department of Athletics each and every day. You certainly, Vin Kat and yourself, have certainly been uh, uh, visible fans and vocal, and uh, I know everyone in the athletic department in our community really appreciates that. We certainly share a vision for what athletics at UofL can be and contribute to the university. And I look forward to continuing to build on that great work we've done uh, over the past couple of years. As you've likely seen from our letter issued earlier today, the NCAA enforcement staff is alleging several level one, level two violations of NCAA bylaws against our 2016, 17, and even into 17, 18 men's basketball program. The allegations include a level one allegation that extra benefits were provided to prospective student athletes, families, and AAU coach by certain individuals purportedly identified and defined by the NCAA as representatives, none of whom had traditional connections to the university beyond their affiliation with Adidas or professional athlete management entities, as well as by a former assistant coach. A level two allegation of recruiting violations by two former men's basketball coaching staff members in providing impermissible transportation and having impermissible contact in the context of recruiting related activities. The third one is a level two allegation that the institution failed to adequately monitor the recruitment of an incoming high profile student athlete. And the last one is a level two allegation that the former head men's basketball coach did not satisfy his head coaching responsibility when he failed to promote an atmosphere of compliance. There are also lower level violations, but they include those include uh, self-identified and promptly reported by the institution, included within the larger context of what I just mentioned in those four key allegations. Throughout the lengthy investigation and enforcement process, because we have nothing to hide, Louisville worked with the NCAA enforcement staff and shared discovery. However, we aggressively pushed back throughout the process to do all that we possibly could do to limit to limit the number and seriousness of the allegations revealed today. I know that our institution could not have done anything more to lessen the charges leveled against us in the NOA. While we have not had an opportunity to thoroughly review the notice, we did anticipate many of the allegations based on conversations with the enforcement staff over the last several months. We will examine each individual allegation and the underlying supportive evidence and make a determination as to which allegations we plan to contest. As per NCAA procedures, the university has 90 days to submit our response to the NOA, followed by a 60 day period when the NCAA enforcement staff can submit its response to our response. As you may know, there is now a new adjudication process available to both the Committee on Infractions and institutions. The Independent Accountability Review Process, otherwise known as the IARP, and while I won't get into the details of both processes now, there are significant differences. And after internal discussions in the months ahead, we either request to go through the IARP or the Committee on Infractions can refer the case to the IARP. I want to take a moment to say something about our current men's basketball student athletes, staff, and Coach Mack. 
We have tremendous young men in our basketball program who work hard on and off the court, who make good decisions, who conduct themselves with dignity and character. They had absolutely nothing to do with the actions of former staff members more than three years ago. And we are all doing all that we can to make sure they do not have to pay a price for those actions. Coach Mack has held our program, has led our program back to its place among the college basketball elite and has done so with integrity and exemplary conduct. The NCAA investigation has been the elephant in the room for quite some time, as most know, and will continue to be in the months ahead. Yet Coach never makes excuses, never exhibits self-pity over the situation, and we are extremely fortunate to have Chris leading our men's basketball program and the Mack family in our community. As President Ben DePuty mentioned earlier, we are limited in what we are able to share or discuss at this time due to NCAA bylaws on public disclosure, and that includes specifics of the allegations and details of the underlying case. We do, however, welcome your questions, and we will do our best to answer those as we're able to at this time. Okay, thank you, Vince. Uh, reporters, you may have to hit star six to unfute, unmute your phone. Again, uh, star six. Our first question will be Rick Bozich, WDRB Sports. May have to unmute, Rick. Yeah, hi, Vince. Um, are there any of these particular allegations that you can comment on that you intend to contest? No, we can't at this time. I, you know, as mentioned, Rick, we've, we've, we're reviewing them as we received them. Um, I don't think there were any terrific surprises, if you will. Um, but I think we want to read through the detail and then think about where our facts will uh, substantiate a good contestation of what they presented. Okay, uh, Pete Thamel, Yahoo Sports. Pete, you might have the same issue. You might need to unmute. Vince, can you hear me? It's Pete Thamel. Yeah, yeah Pete, I can hear you. Oh, oh thanks, Vince. Um, I was just kind of curious from the from the big picture for your program moving forward. You know how you balance what Chris has done in the in the in the, in the years he's been there and the program he's built with what could be coming. Obviously, you, you mentioned before that you know none of the current staff members or, or players have to uh, you know you don't want to pay a price for for things they weren't involved with and, and weren't around for. I'm just wondering institutionally how you how you balance the, the the current great reality of louisville basketball with with this behind it you know yeah i think sort of looming now over it yeah. yeah i mean i think it's been looming over us for a period of time um and that's how it's going to continue and in some ways you you're you're happy to get the thing started um you know because then it provides a light somewhat of a light you know it's a broad time frame for which it could be completed but it does it does provide a, a pathway now that starts and um I think with Chris, we've been honest from day one. When I met Chris in his home and recruited him to the program, I was clear that there was an investigation out there. The FBI was already known. Uh, we discussed that at, 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 you know, whatever I knew at that time, I was happy to share with him so he knew. And then, and then you know, where our stance would be once we uh, learned of the, uh, the allegations. I don't, I don't think that part of it's changed. I've been honest with families, recruits, families, players, um, you know, straight up. And I think that, uh, but we've always said that, you know, there's playing in, for this university and this arena and, and the tradition and legacy that we have, including my father's championship team, uh, is pretty a pretty outstanding uh, experience. And, and we've told them we're going to provide them the best student athlete experience we can, uh, knowing that there'll be negative recruiting and other things that go on and have gone on today. Chris has done an uh, outstanding job. Um, he's been straight up with them as well. And recruited great kids. I mean, they, we've had some, we got terrific individuals today and, and have that have come through the program even in his short period. But, um, you know, I think we, that's the only way you can approach it, Pete, is just to be honest with the situation and, and let people know as much as you can and, uh, you know, feel pretty good about where we're going. And certainly Chris is here for the long term. And, and I think, uh, you know, my expectation to him is we'll, we'll get another championship uh, like when my father was here and we've done in between. Tim Sullivan, Courier Journal. Tim may have to unmute. Okay, we can come back to Tim. Uh, Pat Forty, Sports Illustrated.
Can you hear me, Vince? There you go, Pat. Yeah. Okay. Um, my question is, uh, I was under the impression that the NCAA had paused sending out uh, notices of allegations during the pandemic. Uh, did the timing of this uh, surprise you or give you guys any pause at all? Well, the, I, wouldn't, I wouldldn't say the timing. We didn't know when it would. We knew it was going to be coming at some point. We didn't know when. Certainly the, uh, the NCAAs continued forward, as you know, with NIL and one-time transfers. They're active on a variety of fronts. Uh, we didn't know what that meant related to this in the pandemic. Um, but I would say consistent with what they're doing on other NCAA bylaws and movements right now, that's probably why we did receive the NOA while unfortunate during this time. Thank you. Uh, let's try Lucas Allback, Courier Journal. Lucas, maybe the mute button as well. Must be a courier thing with Lucas and Tim. We we can circle back with them. Let's try Kent Taylor at Wave TV. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, Kent. Hey, Vince. Uh, can you discuss the clause in Chris's contract? Um, what kind of relief would he get from any kind of NCAA uh, violations uh, should they come down? Yeah, I think the you know we were clear to Chris during the recruitment process and and documented in his contract. Should there be, you know, should there uh, we have allegations that would create another postseason ban, albeit uh, you know we're, we'll certainly fight against that, but that that would extend his contract by the same time period. So, so he knew there was coverage and he wouldn't run out of time to, uh, you know, to frankly uh, achieve a, his goals and our goals at the same time. Daniel Lerner, athletic. Danielle, you got the mute button. You can hear me. Oh, there we go. Hey, Danielle. Hey, um, my question is, you know, how much have you been paying attention to the other schools that have, re have received their notice of allegations um, in relation to this case? And from looking at those situations and from your conversations with enforcement staff, do you expect the NCAA to, to try and impose some sort of um, death penalty? No, I mean, for, I'll go to the better part first. Um, you know, we, we've certainly, uh, you know, we follow all the cases. We followed it since the NBA, uh, the NBA, the FBI uh, investigation and allegations came out, you know, and, and followed it through the trials like everybody has. You certainly got transcripts to follow. And then, you know, subsequent to that, the as NCAA has, there's been a number of schools named. I know that uh, uh, they were more public with those names. Um, we didn't know where we fell in the lineup of those, but we, we're certainly following what's happening in other cases. There, there's some where there's similarities in this because, you know, we were, many of us were wrapped up in the same scenario. Um, so I think it's fair to follow it that there, you know, many of them are uh, traditionally been independent of each other. Well, this one's unique that there are some uh, similarities in what was happening in the in the proposed scheme. Um, but as far as the death penalty, I don't foresee that. I think it's clear to the NCAA what we've done. But you know, I don't want to you know get too far down that path and speculate. But I think we've done all we can to do here. We've made some pretty strong uh, unparalleled corrections. In our in our program, and I think uh, I think they're appreciated by by them as well as inside this university and community. So um, I think that's a you know I, I get that where we are as a repeat offender, that people are going to be provocative and push for strong language, and it makes for interesting read for sure. But um, that's that's not what I foresee and what we're going to be approaching here. We have Gary Graves with the Associated Press. Can't hear you, Gary. A reminder to hit star six to unmute your phone. Thank you, Kenny. Gary, Gary did, can you hear me? There we go. Yep. All right. Uh, I, I guess to follow up on that question, um, uh, how heartening is it that, uh, you know, from what I could tell at the first glance, that there is no mention of lack of institutional control with that? Yeah, well, I, I would say that's key. You know, I obviously can't get into 
too much of what is discussed, but I'm I'm happy to tell you that that's not a part of the uh, what we received in the NOA. That's important. Let's try Tim Sullivan again at Courier Journal. Tim, star six, done mute. Okay, how about Luke, Lucas Allback at the Courier Journal? Maybe Tim or Lucas can text her question to Kenny or to you, John. All right, we'll move on to Dana O'Neill from The Athletic. Vince? Hi, Dana. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to clarify, you mentioned, you know, the NTA and the IARP group, um, and that'd be something you, I think you said you might pursue. Is there a timing issue with that if, if you guys want to refer this to the complex case unit? Well, I don't know, you know, we don't know enough about the allegations and the facts behind it. You know, as, as you can see in the NOA letter, you, you receive that, but there's a lot of detail that'll come in the, you know, forthcoming months as we prepare our own, um, you know, response and have exchange with the NCAA. So I think the other thing is we're, you know, I'm not, uh, certainly there's no expertise on the IARP. It's just getting started. I think that, you know, the notion that the Rice Commission came out and developed a new process, you know, has kind of born this process and the people involved with it are pretty interesting to me. Um, you know, under the one of the principles, I guess, and I'll take some liberties here that, you know, individuals should be punished harder than institutions and that, uh, you know, some of the innocent don't have to pay the price as much. And I think that's what's intriguing to me as we watch this new process play out. So it's early. I, I certainly don't have enough understanding of of all of it. Um, I probably as much as anybody on the phone and no more, but uh, I, I do find it intriguing because if, if that's the notion that, you know, where we have parallel processes, to parallel processes today and the IARP follows up on what I thought was one of the outputs of the, the Rice Commission, that, that would be interesting related to the actions that we've taken. Eric Crawford, WDRB. Eric, can't hear you. Uh, hey, Vince, I'm here. There you go. Um, I pretty much was going to ask what Dana just asked, but I will kind of just one little follow-up on that. Is there a point at which in the next 90 days you have to decide which route you will go, whether Committee on Infractions or this other, or do you know what the timetable might be for that? No, I don't foresee that. I think in the first 90 days, we'll spend our time on on our response. Um, obviously, there's other parties uh, a part of this, so um, they have they'll have to respond as well, and we'll see how that plays out on the the time frame. Um, you're related here, but no, I don't I don't I don't you know predict us making that call during that time. I think we need to submit our response and hear back from the NCAA uh, while we're investigating what's available. Okay, Vince, uh, Tim Sullivan has emailed or has texted me a question. I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Okay. Uh, he wants to know if you see any factual assertions that you believe are incorrect or if it is more a matter of interpretation as far as whether the findings should be viewed in the context of aggravating or mitigating factors. Well, again, and, you know, there's a there's a bylaw out, bylaw out there, which I'll reference 19.01.3 that you know, prevents me to really discuss in those facts and how I feel about or allegations, I should say, uh, not facts, allegations at this point for us digging in on it. I certainly, like anybody would, um, you know, eyeball certain things that I know that um, that I'm comfortable in where we are and what our responses might develop, but not going to get into any detail on what, what they might be at this point. Okay, I remind the media, we also have Dr. Ben Deputy available to answer questions. Um, I have a question uh, pending from Kent Taylor, Wave TV. Hello, do I need to remute or, I mean, unmute? No, you're good. You you're good. Kent, okay. we can hear you. Actually, this would be for, for both Vince and Dr. Ben Deputy. Dr. Ben Deputy and, and Vince, you both mentioned how there's been so much turnover and, and the individuals mentioned in this uh, notice of allegations no longer work at the university, but yet you still have the relationship with Adidas. What, how far have the discussions gone uh, as far as terminating that relationship or what were the, the 
maybe the decision making process of, of maintaining that. You know, and Kent, maybe I'll start and, uh, and Neely can finish because, uh, you know, that those discussions started when I got here. It was, uh, you know, those were quick phone calls to Adidas when I got here. Mark King at the time, I've certainly met with uh, Chris McGuire, Jim Murphy, representatives, Zeon, uh, the senior representatives of Adidas. I've been crystal clear about our expectations of standards of conduct and what we, how we intend to do business. And they, you know, obviously shared theirs. And, and while we while we're sitting here looking at potentially rogue employees that have popped up in this scenario, and they do in other companies as well, and I've seen it unfortunately in my lifetime in the corporate world, they, they don't represent the values of either institution. And I, I think it's easy to jump to the conclusion that that's what either side's all about, and, and that's not the case. So I think that with those that are carrying forward the values of the, of the organization as they should be and are stated, that I think we're comfortable where we are today and what they've what they've done inside their house. And I know they're extremely comfortable with what we've done inside our house to uh, to move forward. I think uh, the only thing I would add, Vince, you said it perfectly, is that my expectation of anybody that we deal with, whether it's Adidas or other others, is exactly uh, the expectation I have of everyone on campus that we act with the highest integrity. Okay, unless Lucas Allback has joined us. Uh, Lucas, are you there? Okay, I, I have another question from Daniel Lerner at The Athletic. Daniel? Daniel, we can't hear you yet. Um, I'm not sure whether Vince or Neely, um, which there one of you go. would be able to answer this, um, but my question is, you mentioned, you know, so many of the individuals named um, in this notice are no longer associated with the university, some former coaches and other people, but they do need to craft their own responses. Do you have a sense of, you know, how closely you might have to work with them in order to kind of put together this response or do you are you just leaving that completely up to those individuals i think we're in in charge of our response that's what we can control and that's what we are responsible for vince anything you want to add no i think that's that's proper i mean we can't speculate on what their uh how they're going to respond to their their own allegations and and how that boils up under ours unfortunately it doesn't work as cohesively as you would think once you the parties are separated which they have here i think under different circumstances had they still been representatives of the university we might be more in sync but i don't expect that moving forward okay uh, eric crawford wdrb uh, vince I, I just want to see if are you consulting outside counsel on this or have you retained any and if so, can you tell us who, who they might be? Yes, um, Mike Glazier with Bond, Chinnick and King, who's a, uh, a longtime veteran of this process, uh, former NCAA, but has, has spent his career dealing with situations similar to this. And you'll recognize the name if you Google him related to other, uh, other cases. He would be the lead um, on the case for us. And uh, Rick Bozich again, WDRB. Rick, Rick, are you there? Can you hear me now? There you go, Rick. It's not a cell phone commercial. Um, <laughs> my, my, my question is, do you have any plans at all uh, as you move forward to self-impose any sanctions uh, on the program as the university did the last time? I will take this. No. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't think that's that's not uh, an option for us today. We, we're not looking at that option. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read another question here from Tim Sullivan, and this would be for uh, both both for Vince and for Dr. Ben Deputy. Uh, you've emphasized a willingness to push back. This is a different stance than last time around under different leadership. What accounts for the different tone? Was it influenced by the North Carolina case? 
Um, you know, every case, it's when you're leaders, you have to take account of where you are. You know, leadership is about the particular context. And right now with the team we have, with all that we have done, with the extensive changes that have been made at UFL, that's a big part of what's guiding our decision making. Yeah, I think I think that's I think Neely hit the nail on the head, and I think experience in the process certainly uh, plays into how you approach this, uh, you know, this time around. And I, and I think it, uh, while I think our our case and our view of things is certainly shapes um, our approach, and it and it is maybe a bit different uh, to the outside, but I think it's appropriate. Okay, we have Kent Spencer from WHAS. Kent, wait, yeah, you might be, you might still be muted. Thank you, everybody. This is so difficult and I'm just appreciative right. of your bearing with us. Vince, do you hear me now? I think I've unmuted myself successfully. I know, you're, you're in yes. a golf cart somewhere. That's what I expect. No, 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 no. Um, Given given some of the changes that you guys have had to make in the last couple of weeks and the uncertain future of the of the pandemic, does that does that maybe change how you can fight this thing with the NCAA moving forward, and how how long you guys can take this? No, no, it it, it doesn't. I think that uh, you know I I think the decisions we made in this past week incorporated the potential of some of this as well. But I think that we've been thoughtful about our finances and uh you know have availed our reserves to stay there intact as we we deal with uh you know what may or may not come from the football season but no i th i think i'm pretty comfortable that um you know where we are and and what comes of this you know to be honest ken i think people ask about what we expend on these things and where the you know damages and all that you know i think we we took our hit uh, back in the 17 time period. And I think that uh, related to, you know, when people were upset about what happened at that time, and it re was reflective maybe in um, ticket, you know, season ticket holder, things like that. But, you know, what you actually get through, and I think everybody's aware of what the NCAA fine was at that time and all that legal bills. And, um, you know, I, I feel comfortable that we're, we're fiscally prepared to, uh, to run the course. Okay, uh, Aaron Mattis at uh, WDRB. Aaron, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Can you, hear, you guys hear me? We yes. got you, Aaron. Okay, uh, Vince, I was just wondering about the IARP. I think you mentioned something that, you know, individuals punish maybe more than institutions, so there's some to like there, but is there some, I guess, for lack of a better word, uh, scariness to the idea that there's no precedent there. I think there's one, maybe two schools that have gone that route and and there's no appeals. Right. Well, I think that is the, uh, you know, the thing that's a, a bit concerning, I think, for those. There, there's not enough precedent for us to, to really base a, a strong decision on today. It, it is an unknown, and the unknown is always a doozy. It's human nature. But in the same vein, if they're following the process or I'll say principles that I felt like I heard coming out of the Rice Commission, uh, these are these are terrific uh, business associates and leaders and in other ways um, that that have a you know have a lot of respect for their their uh, their resumes. And I think that they have great appreciation for when things happen in a business like our business here and what you do about it and and how you control it uh, going forward. So I think that you know, not that the uh, Committee on Infractions process wouldn't, um, you know, but it is a more structured process probably than what I'm expecting the IARP to be long-term for, for any institution has to go through it. Okay, I have uh, Jerry Eves from Eves Sports Radio. Jerry, are you with us? Yes, can you all hear me? Yeah, Jerry. How you doing, Ben? I got doing a well. I just came out of the closing, so I hope I'm not redundant, but have you all spoke with the basketball team and the players and given them the time frame of the 90 days that you all have, the 60 days that the NCAA will have to resolve the issue for them to make and their families to make a decision on their eligibility and what may happen with sanctions? That's a, Jerry, that's a great question. You being a former player can, can appreciate that. 
Um, so Chris has been pretty good all along about updating family members and uh, and players, you know, during the season most recently um, on where things stand or where we feel like we are, but mainly on the process. As you can appreciate, the kids are very interested in in playing in March Madness, and particularly as we sit here in in May and look to next March. Um, to better ask, answer your question, I'll be uh, I'll be on the a Zoom call with Chris. Uh, in a little while with uh, with those families, with those players and talking about that and explaining that very timeline because that first 90 days, you know, you can go through this and kind of see precedent where this thing's a year, you know, kind of a year process plus or minus. And I think that, um, you know, those first 90 days, assuming that none of the parties here request a delay or a stay, it's 90 days, but you don't see that all the time. And then after that period is the 60 days after that, they set a hearing out. And that's why you get into these extended time frames like we're seeing even right now with NC State. So while I think it's unlikely that we'll miss the, uh, you know, the uh, the March Madness next year, I mean, it, it's hard for me to give somebody a 100% guarantee. I'm not sure I'd want to, you know, put my blood on it, but I think it's highly unlikely that we would miss uh, our ability to play in that tournament next season. Thank you. We maybe have time for one or two more questions. Uh, Andy Wolfson with the Courier Journal. Andy, are you here? Andy, we're we're not hearing you yet. Actually, I believe he sent me the question uh, okay. via text. I'll read it. I believe this is for Dr. Ben Deputy. Uh, given the personnel changes and given all the reforms cited by Do cited by Dr. Ben Deputy, are you disappointed with the fact that the NCAA issued these this notice of allegations? Did you argue that none of them should have been issued? You know, I, I, of course, it's disappointing to get these allegations. And now what I'm focused on is the fact that uh, whatever path we choose, whichever way we go, that people recognize that we have self-corrected and that we have gone above and beyond any other institution in terms of how we have positioned ourselves to conduct ourselves with the highest integrity. Yeah, I believe that's all we have. Uh, everyone, thanks for being with us today. John? Of course. Yes, well, before you close out, I just wanted to take a moment and reiterate to everybody just to say thank you for joining us and to remind you that you are family. And so we need you. Uh, we are, again, as uh, Vince told you, we cannot just say 100% guarantees, but if you look, and how long other pro procedures have taken where we are. We're looking forward to a great year. We have a great coach, wonderful young people playing. And so we need you to stick with us. I just want to remind you of that. And never forget, no cards. So John, you can close it out now. Thanks everyone for being with us this afternoon. That concludes the event. Uh, be safe and be healthy. Thank you. Thank you everybody.